place an external outbound call, there is no need to put a 1 or a 9 in front of the area code. Simply enter the area code and finish with those other digits. Now you can press dial or pick up the handset to send the call out. Extension dialing works in the same manner. Simply type the extension and press dial or pick up the handset. To place an active call on hold, press the hold button in the lower left hand corner. You will see hold appear in front of the caller ID and the line key blink red. To take the call off of hold, you can press the line key, resume, or the hold button. Incoming calls will appear like so. I can pick up my handset. I can click answer on the screen and if my handset is docked, answer brings it out over speaker. I can click the headset button or the speaker button. Any of those options will answer the call. Once I'm on a call, I can change my method of audio. I can click the headset button. That will light up green when in use. Or I can click the speaker button, which will light up green as well. The mute button is right below. It lights up red when in use. The volume control is at the very bottom. When on a call, this is the audio volume. When not on a call, this is the ringer volume. The screen displayed is what we refer to as the home screen. Your extension will be listed three times, representing how many lines you have or how many calls you can handle at once. The open line keys three here on the right, can be programmed as favorites or speed dials. To program a speed dial, simply hold down an open line key until the add contact screen appears. Enter the first and last name. Whatever you input in these two sections will appear on your home screen. In contact, insert the number. Extension if it's internal, 10 digits if it's external. Then hit save. It then appears as this one does where I can simply click to dial. Then we have soft keys across the bottom. To access the corporate directory, press corporate directory. This brings you to a corporate directory search. Type in a few letters of a first or last name. Hit the right arrow key until search directory is highlighted and press the center button to select. Matching results will appear. Using the right arrow key, you can click dial or detail. Details will show you all numbers associated with this contact. You can select any number to dial out to. To access the call log, press call log. This will display a list of your recent calls, missed, placed, and received. Click dial 
to dial out to the highlighted record. Click Info to see more details about the call. And click Type to view one specific type of call, such as Miss. Forward will display the three different forwarding options. Forward always will forward any and all incoming calls to the number that you enable. To enable a forwarding option, select it from the list and input the number that you'd like your calls to forward to. This can be an extension or a 10 digit number and then press Enable. The extension icons will change to remind you that call forwarding is enabled and you will see the number that your calls are forwarding to blinking with the time. To disable, press forward, select the option that is enabled and press disable. Forward no answer will forward calls after a number of unanswered rings to this phone first. If you select this option, you can see forward after rings is set to three. That means that any incoming calls will ring this phone three times, and if it goes unanswered, it would then forward over to the number listed in the contact section. Each ring is considered six seconds long. So if a call forwards after three rings, it will forward after 18 seconds. The number of rings can be changed. Simply hit the backspace button and enter a new number. Forward Busy will forward calls in the event that you have Do Not Disturb enabled or all three of your lines are already occupied. When call forwarding is enabled, all voicemails will be left on the contact numbers phone. Click More to access more soft keys. DND means do not disturb. When enabled, it is going to prevent calls from ringing to the phone and send all callers directly to voicemail. Press DND to enable it. Do not enter signs will appear as the extensions icon. Press DND again to disable it. Retrieve works with our Park and Retrieve feature. Park and Retrieve allows you to place a call on hold on one phone and take it off of hold on a different phone. You can park calls for yourself or for others to retrieve. When parking a call, it must be parked on an extension. It does not matter what extension you park the call on as long as it is a valid and working extension and there is not another call already parked there. Only one call can be parked on an extension at a time. If you are parking a call for yourself, we recommend that you use your own extension, simply because it is easy for you to remember and there is most likely not another call already parked there. If you are parking a call for someone else to retrieve, it is recommended to use their extension because it is easy for them to remember. When you have an active call that you'd like to park, press more and park. 
enter the extension to park the call on and press enter. The caller will immediately be placed on hold and the call disappears from the screen. Now you can go to any phone, press more, retrieve, enter the extension that the call was parked on and press enter. The caller is immediately taken off of hold and you can continue speaking. With this phone, you have the ability to conduct a three-way conference call. While on an active call, click conference to bring the third party in. This automatically places the original caller on hold and now you can enter the extension or 10 digit number of the third party. and press send. There is a cancel key in the event that the third party does not pick up. Once the third party answers, let them know that you are about to bring them in on a conference call. If they cannot do so, click cancel. If they are ready to join the conference, click more and then conference. The caller ID changes to Safe Conference, letting you know that all parties are now connected. Conferencing is all or nothing, so if you were the party who started this conference and you hang up, all other parties will be disconnected. Next, we have transferring. There are three different types of transfers. A consulted transfer allows you to announce the call to the third party, let them know who you, are, who you are transferring the call to, then connect the two parties together. To start a consulted transfer, while on an active call, click the transfer button. The first party is placed on hold and now you will enter the extension or 10 digit number of the party you'd like to transfer the call to. And press send. There is a cancel key in the event that the third party does not pick up. Once the third party answers, announce the call. If they do not want the transfer, click cancel. If they want to be connected, click transfer. Calls disappear from your screen and now those two parties are connected. A blind transfer does not allow you to announce the call to the third party. You're simply sending the original caller directly over to the party that they are trying to reach. To start a blind transfer while well, on a call, you can do one of two things. You can click the transfer button and press blind. As long as you see blind transfer two appear, you know you are doing a blind transfer. Or you can hold down the transfer button, which brings you directly to blind transfer two. Now you can enter the extension or 10 digit number and press send. that call will immediately disappear from your screen and those parties will be connected. A voicemail transfer 
allows you to drop the caller directly into the voicemail box of the party that they are trying to reach. To perform a voicemail transfer while on an active call, click the transfer button. Now enter star by five, the extension of the party you'd like to transfer the call to and pound. Call will disappear from your screen and now that person can leave a voicemail. To access voicemail, Click on the voicemail key. The very first time you click on the voicemail key, it's going to ask you to enter a default passcode. These passcodes will be provided to you by your management team. Once you enter that default passcode, you'll be asked to enter your own personal passcode. This passcode must be six to eight digits in length. It cannot contain straight ascending or descending numbers, your extension, or any repeating patterns. Once you've entered that passcode, it will ask you to enter it again as a passcode confirmation, and then you'll be asked to record your name. And this is just your name, this is not your voicemail greeting. Once you're done with that, you'll finally be entered into the voicemail portal where you can listen to any of your messages and record your voicemail greeting. If you choose not to record a personal voicemail greeting, the greeting will be your recorded name followed by an automated message. From then on, every time you click on your voicemail key, all you have to do is enter your personal passcode and you'll be dialed right into the portal. To access settings, click on your home button. Now we can scroll over using our right arrow key until we see settings and use the center button to select. Here in settings, you can access things such as ringer type, backlight intensity, contrast, headset memory, basic settings such as those. To get back to the home screen, no matter where you are on your phone, simply click the home button until you get back there. 